Hello, welcome to Bob Barn Builds. I'm Bob Barn, and this is my rocket saw build. I began by removing the valve from the empty cylinder. I laid it on its side and used the crowbar into the handle to stop it moving as I tried to remove the valve. They're usually very tight, so I used an adjustable spanner and some leverage to get it loose, and then I was able to get it by hand after that. I filled it to the top with water, purging all of the gas and let it sit for 24 hours. Then I emptied it, refilled it and emptied it twice more just to be on the safe side. Next I laid the empty cylinder on the bench to cut the top off and then cut the bottom off. It curls in a bit at the bottom and obviously curves at the top as well. To determine where to cut I laid a straight edge along it until the point where the straight edge and the cylinder no longer meet and mark that with a pencil. Using the welded line around the middle I measure out 13.5 cm, roll it 13.5 cm and so on. Using a bendy ruler I then mark out the line. Using the 4 inch grinder, I cut the top off the cylinder. Making sure after I've cut the top off, I use the grinder to remove the bar from the inside of the cylinder. I then do the same and remove the bottom and again remove the bar from each part. And here's the two cylinders side by side. 4 inch sanding disc to remove the paint. It's 80 grit but really I should have used 40 as it just wasn't rough enough to remove the paint. At this point, uh, I change over back to a normal disc and you can see how much quicker it is for taking off the paint. This is the section I use for the internal flue and all the other parts. It's 100 by 100 mil and it's six mil thick, so it's good and thick. I laid it down the bench and put the cylinder over it and marked out where I need to cut it. After I'd cut the cylinder, I put it in place and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Next I measured out and marked out the pipe. Uh, firstly for the feeder tube uh, and the distance between the cylinder and the feeder tube. I picked an arbitrary about 10 centimeters there. I made a mistake here in measuring out that the end of the pipe at 45 degrees. I realised later on, before I cut it, that if I made that mark further along the pipe, I'd have the two matching parts. Next I cut out the section for the feeder tube. I then measure and cut for the inside flue. I make sure I have a perfect 90 degree angle and then I start to weld it up. I stand it up, make sure it's level and using the section of metal that I took out of the pipe uh, for the feeder tube, I weld it onto the back to keep it upright. Happy that it's level, I start to weld it up and seal the joints. After I've done that, I take the two cylinders that have been welded together and put it on as a trial run, and it fits pretty okay. I take a section of chimney flue that will be welded permanently into the back of it, so it only needs to be short. I measure it out, mark it off, and then I cut it. Determining where it goes, I decided to go just above the inlet tube. So I lay the cylinders down their side and I put the piece of flue on top and I measure it out as accurately as I can by eye with the marker, leaving it a little bit tight so when I cut the hole, it'll fit in nicely. Cutting out with the grinder was actually quite difficult uh, and it took more than one attempt to do it. Every time I cut it and checked it, it was still far too tight. So I had to take a little bit off the inside each time. I eventually get a nice tight fit and bash it in with the help of a kill and dried log. I then grind the enamel off the pipe so I can get a good weld on it when I put it into the back of the cylinder. With the exit flume in place I put a small tack on and then using a level make sure that it's straight. I can still adjust it here with the tack because it's only very light. And when I'm happy that it is straight I put a weld all the way around. This is an exhaust heat wrap that I bought off eBay to wrap the inside of the flue. Um, 
I didn't realize till afterwards that it was fiberglass and my hands were really, really itchy. I should have worn gloves. So if you're gonna use it, make sure you wear gloves. These are uh, almost like cable ties that come with it. They're metal, so they're gonna last. I added two together like this. So I was able to wrap them all the way around the pipe and, and hold the wrap in place. So I wrapped it all the way around to the top and then used those cable ties to tighten it up. I wasn't too happy with how secure they were, so I got two Jubilee clips, added them together in the same fashion at the top and the bottom, and I screwed them very tight and it seemed to hold it very, very securely. I was happy enough with that. I put the top on, ready for welding. It was very easy to weld this bottom section because they belong together in the first place, so they fit together perfectly. Also sealing up the joints along here was very easy because it was such a tight fit. This is a piece of 8mm thick steel that I got for the top of the stove. I'm going to have a flat top on it. I laid the cylinder on top and measuring 20mm from the side, the top and the other side as well. Then I'll cut this off. This metal was just, it was so thick it took forever to get through and I think I used probably more than one disc to do it. I make a second identical piece and then I weld them together. Heat from welding on this side seemed to make them warp and pull together, which meant that it wasn't completely flat. But it was nothing that a bit of jumping up and down couldn't solve. Then I welded the other side and it was done. Using the square of metal I cut from the front of the cylinder, I made a door. Although it was slightly curved, so I had to hammer it straight. I did this a few times quickly, and then I realized I should use something else instead of my fingers to hold it down. Nice and flat, I put the hinge up to the side and I mark where the holes have to go. I used a 3mm drill bit first to drill a smaller pilot hole and then moved on to the 8mm bit. There's a bit of oil well drilling to try and make the drill bit last longer, although they're not great drill bits. With the holes drilled, I used a tap and die to thread the hole. I could have used a nut and bolt, but this is just much neater and it's quite enjoyable to do. It was only after I screwed it all in place that I realized the mistake that I'd made. When I tried to close the door, because the bolts lined up perfectly and they were full length, the door was never gonna close. So I took it off, put it into the vise, and took off the ends of the bolts. And when I did this, it closed perfectly. Next, I put the top on, and then using a marker, I marked out the exact circumference of the cylinders. I used the grinder disc at a slight angle, which enabled me to get a much finer circle. I did this so it would fit together with the top of the rocket stove. I don't like the idea of welding it up so I can't ever clean it or see inside it. But by doing this, I can drop it on the top and use a small amount of sealer and it's perfectly sealed. Something like fire cement or high temperature silicone. I cut the angle here for the feeder tube. I just marked a small angle and cut it out. It's fairly arbitrary and welded it all in place. This is some stove rope I got in the local DIY and I'll attach this around so when the door seals it's completely sealed. This is specific high temperature glue used to hold stove rope in place. I use it quite liberally here and the stove rope just kind of tacks onto it and you can use it straight away. And then I ran into my second mistake with the door in that it wouldn't now close because the stove rope was too thick. So I took it off and I widened the holes, which gave me a bit of play when I screwed it back on. After putting it back on, you can see here, I have plenty of adjustments. So I close it up, tighten it up nicely, and now it forms a very tight seal. Next step was putting on the latch. Very simple again. I tapped it out so I could use a bolt. It would then swivel and close on the bolt that I have welded to the door. So I tack it all up, 
and make sure that it works. There we go, a nice tight sealed door. I put some tape over the opening of the flue, just so when I pour the vermiculite in, to insulate around the bottom, that I won't go down into the flue. That's the end of the build video. Tune in for the next video, which will be the installation and the burning. And if you enjoyed this video, you can like and subscribe. I'll be putting up other projects soon. Thanks for tuning in.